this was not an easy episode because of my deep-seated hatred for everything. <laughs> I had to talk you off several ledges for this. Several ledges. Several. It was multi-tiered ledging. But we were able to get three. Yeah, by hook and by crook, we managed to get three jerseys that we said are good from the Adidas era, not from any other eras. Right. So there's not no, inspired by any other no eras. No crossover. These are new Adidas jerseys. I really like this jersey. That this you're this was my fourth. Like I, I was campaigning for this if we didn't find better ones. And I think we found better ones. Swap it out right now. Take Next on Ugly Birds? Take it off. Build. Quick. Welcome back, sports fans, to another episode of Ugly Thirds. Today's topic is... I just love how close he is to the camera. Yeah, really. It's like he took it out of his mouth. Best overall, the Adidas Era Tour. Thank you, Phil. Gentlemen, do your thing. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Wow. Wow. I've said that like five Mm. times now. You've said nothing. Can I make a case for number three? Because number three is my own personal one. Oh, I mean, I'm with you. You want me me to put it up? Let's do it, yeah. I think that the Washington Capitals are the are tied for the stalest look in the entire league. Well, they've had that Reebok look since the start of Reebok, 2007. Right. It mm-hmm. hasn't changed. Nope. And I don't think it's aged well. No. It's it's very wordy. It they threw in 2012. They threw back in a in a winter classic to uh their 90s look, which was great. They mm-hmm. kept it around as a third for a couple of years. Fantastic. But primarily, it's been the red and the white Washington Capitals with the stick and everything. It's not It's not a great look to and hold on to. Right here, the truncates, but it's not on the back, and piping, and it, it didn't convert to Adidas well, and they've somehow gotten away with it the entire Adidas era. 17 years they've had that. It's not a good look. No. I, I, and they got to be waiting for a bench to retire. And then, okay, now sure. that he's retired, we sell new we, jerseys. We need a rebrand. But we but we rocked the red for so long, like we're out of like PR stunts. Then this thing shows up. Gorgeous. It really is. And the intro workings of this came from that stadium series where With it said caps. caps. Not a great look. But they needed something to just break up the monotony of the red and the white. And this does it wonderfully. No, honestly. I think if they make a red version of this, you run with it. Yep. That's it. That's the look. Yep. You're right. And now, now, okay, is the W the most dynamic thing ever? No, but it's got the three stars of the D.C. flag, which and you can also say is D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. And the Washington Monument. And the Washington Monument is there in the middle. Subtle but wonderful. And now, I don't know what you do on the white jersey to make it work. Maybe you put it, like, you keep a real thick outline on it or something to keep it white. Yeah. Maybe it does flip well. I don't know. Yeah. But I think if you put this in a red jersey, that's the new look. It's got white shoulders like the original look. It's got more traditional stripes that work. It is simple. It is effective. It is probably for the first time the Capitals aren't super flashy. They're like, no, no, we've been around. Mm-hmm. And there's that's a good thing. My biggest concern with a rebrand or a potential rebrand for them once Ovechkin goes is they try and make the Weagle work. And I don't think it does. No, the Weagle works, but it needs it. It would need three stars above it. It is missing something. Yeah. And every good concept, and I've, I've won a contest with one of them, you put stars above it, and it like it needs something to balance. It's very bottom heavy. And then it goes up, and it trails off in every direction, and then it, there's not, like, they need something up right. top. And the three stars does it. And honestly, you may do a red one, and then you have the three, the Weagle with three stars. Okay, it would work. But this does too. And when yeah. the NHL has 14 logos that are letters, why not Washington? They have exactly what they need for their next phase right in front of them. I'm hoping that they take I it. hope they're smart enough to see it. Yep. Take the bait. Take the bait, Washington. I love this one, too. Oh, but you said oh. there's no throwbacks. It's not a throwback. It's different. It's a faux-back. And the most important detail that makes it different is why this is such an easy jersey to love now, as opposed to that money mess that you have over there. What did they do? So simple. They took out white. They took out the white. The plate of spaghetti over here versus a major upgrade. You can't see. Cannon? You can't see on that monitor in front of us. If you're zoomed out, 
you cannot see Canucks in that jersey. Yeah, from a, from a distance you can. From a distance you can. From but a distance. Now you can. You remove something so completely simple. Oh, look at that thing! It does really pop, doesn't it? It's unbelievable. It's so subtle, and the, so the stripes are not the same. They're not the same. A little thicker here, because it's calling back to. This is not their original jersey, but their 50th jersey that is meant to evoke that original jersey with two even stripes. But instead of just two even stripes and the green and blue blend so much, this yep. is so forgettable. Um, they put in the old colors. No, they're not V. I was trying to see what was in the stripe. In the well, and there, there is a subtle V in this stripe. And I, look, I'm oh, not. There is. There is. I'm not the. It's an Easter egg. I don't think it's worth like. Oh, let's write home about it. You want to? You want a jersey cam in? Well, it is. I was there. trying to see what it looked like. It was kind of hard to see if it was actual. Jersey. It is there. Oh yeah, right there. Yeah. Yeah. No, it actually pop, pops better on camera than in person. Yeah, I can see it now. We got, well, because it's between the two colors. Yeah. Now look, I mean, if they turn that into an actual thing, I'd be more in favor of it. But at the same time, this freaking works. Yeah. It works. If this sticks around as the third. I yeah, it, I, it should not like blue and green are the colors of British Columbia. Like that's right. They yep. got that right. But knowing that in the same way as the goat head works as a perfect third, mm. right? You don't ignore that history. This is well done. Is it mountainous in British Columbia? I... Let me check the collar. It is. Well, there we go. It is. It it tracks. Now this is great, but it's not number one. Another jersey I need to buy. You. If you need to buy a jersey while we do this, I think that's very important too. So, you you go ahead and start. I'm going to take it. You there is nothing more Adidas in the Adidas era than the Seattle Kraken. You have two teams that enter the NHL during the Adidas era: the Vegas Golden Knights. I think it got removed. And the Seattle Kraken. Vegas was fine. Their look is okay but now that we've had eight years of adidas I did it they me. went out and made this look there goes that jersey and the design that went along with it to perfection vegas was a very safe play yeah what well, it and, was and it, fine it's penguins evocative it's penguins adjacent with the color scheme and the right. design Oh, I think the downside to Vegas was they really wanted just a unite this. They wanted to go a different route, but they couldn't. Right. You're you're putting a professional sports franchise in a city where gambling is the most attractive thing to that town. And look where we are now. Every everything is gambling. But yeah. they had to make it seem like this wasn't about gambling. Right. It was a very safe play and with the gray and it's like it's fine. This though, and and the white I think is better than the blue. We have the blue over there, and there's nothing wrong with the blue. No. It's this white transitioning to blue. It gets darker. It gets darker, and then oh no, it's red level. Right. Like this. This transition is so well done. Yep. The it logo is, get darker. The logo is stunning, and the ridging along this uh, center part of the S here. The it, tentacle. The tentacle. suckers. Um, the the multi layered color effect here with that important piece of red that also makes an appearance in the hemline and the sleeves here, like every they got this so well done, and it was something where we're watching it unfold on TV, um, and you said I can't believe they did the Kraken. Well, because they, they can't believe it they kept did getting it. mentioned like tongue in cheek, right. and I guess even when they when they interviewed the creators, they're like it never went away. It was always on our list. Yeah. Like, no matter what we did, it was always there. It's cheeky. But, th and here's the thing. They knew that you can't just show a cartoonish Kraken. You can't just have a big old octopus on there or whatever right. and make it a good logo. Because there's so many ways this goes sideways. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, no. By not, in the same way that Jaws, they wanted to use the shark so much more. The animatronic simply would not work. It failed so often where they're like okay how do we shoot around the shark we're here we're on location we're wasting money right how do we shoot around and by not showing the shark it is so much better yeah it's so alien same way the less they show it the better right here they know that the old like you get an eye you get a tentacle implied that's it right you don't actually see the monster involved 
and that is so much better than actually showing it. It says everything without saying anything at all. Like, yeah, it's, it's so incredible. And the well shoulder done. patch. I mean, don't don't uh, th- like for every every Seattle concept I've seen. You know how many anchors were involved. You know how many space needles were involved. How did I never see a space needle? End of the two. Like that was. It's so good. It's so good. Adidas knocked, and that and that really is all. That's a lot of credit to Adidas on this look. Yeah, I know how involved they were. They nailed it. Look they the, nailed it. The range of this, though, like you have a third jersey, a third jersey, and a brand new team. Like that's not bad. No, good on them. No, it's good on them. And, they, and we didn't even really scratch a lot of the Winter Classic and stuff because there's good stuff there, but a lot of it's throwbacks. Yeah, or a lot of it started in Reebok and they've adjusted. Um, this is all fresh mm-hmm. and it is good. Yep. Very much so. So, uh, that's the end of this era. Like, even though I said, Phil takes out of this era, no, that was one episode. This is the Adidas era. We've, we've put a cap on it. Um, tell us your thoughts overall. Was Adidas good for jerseys? Um, and then as, as we look at, cause Reebok's obviously next, we'll go, mm-hmm. we'll work our way into the past. What are your thoughts on what we need to do? to make this series better. And even what, what suggestions you have for what jersey should be in there? Because we're going to do the same the same categories, right? I want it to be nice and measurable yep. back to the other other region. And you'd be like, oh, okay, what are the best overall in this one? Right, right, right. Or what's the most innovative per era and so on. So let us know in the comments. Yep. He's Shrems. I'm John. Phil, take us out. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Ring the bell so you get notifications of new videos that we post and come back for another episode of Ugly Third. What jersey was it? What? The one that you missed. It was a, the Oilers, the, the pajama one.